hello guys welcome back to my youtube channel so today we are back in australia in search of masters and phd opportunities so we are at daikin university um one piece of good news i actually contacted a subscriber from this channel who got a scholarship at this university last year and i asked him particularly about the use of an agent so many universities in australia require you to use agents while applying to the university but unfortunately Daikin doesn't require agents i've con confirmed from the subscriber from this youtube channel who got it last year and um, he said he didn't use any agents so that's good news i've also started the application on my own just to confirm so i started an application this is the application i started and I've imputed my citizenship, just kept um, like dummy information there. You can see here I use Nigeria. And I've been even able to upload documents and I can continue to other tabs as well. You can continue to other tabs as well when you upload um, like your document, citizenship and the other things like that. You can also move and we can go to area of studies and when you fill in the other documents required. So here you do not need, what I'm trying to say is that you do not need um, an agent to fill out the form in the first place. So that's good news. For the English language requirements quickly. So those who studied in the English language will not require these IELTS or TOEFL exam. However, um, when you check this thing a little bit more, you will see that the list of English language countries are quite um, narrow. The list here, you can see Australia, a bit of Kenya, a bit of Zambia, um, you see South Africa. But my country, Nigeria, is not here. <laughs> and a number of other countries like Ghana or India are also not here. So what do you do? Um, there's this bit of information here saying that the English language proficiency is assessed on a case-by-case -case basis. So if your country is not on this list, it is important that you show them evidence that you study in the English language, either a letter from your school or make a case for yourself that you studied in the English language. And this will prevent you from submitting any of the English language proficiency, proficiency tests, which are quite expensive, I would say. So having talked about that, how do you now go for this scholarship? I haven't addressed the fact that we do not need an agent and I haven't addressed the English language palaver. So fortunately, the dates are still here. Um, the dates are still open. You can see, we can open this and show you yourself when to apply. Many of the departments open or accept applications all year round. And what you see here, EOI means um, like a form that you feel to express your interest. I think the full meaning is expression of interest form. So expression of interest form is one of the documents you need to submit for this application. We'll be looking at the form shortly and it's accepted all year round for most faculties and most departments. So we'll go further and dig into what the scholarship covers. So you can see here a stipend of 30,000. You can see year relocation allowance, depending on where you're coming from. You can see year overseas health cover. And you see the duration here, three to four years for a PhD and two years for a master's. So for the selection criteria, you could also read that on your own. I think it's common information. So how do you apply? So you go to prospective students here and click on this tab. So it takes you here, it brings you here. Let's just click it once again to just show, demonstrate what I mean. It brings you here. So these are the forms we talked about. So different departments might have different expression of interest forms. So pay attention to the particular department or faculty you're applying to. So this is arts and education, business, there's engineering here, there's health. There's um, frontier, uh, frontier materials, there's another education here. So just pay attention to the particular department you, you, you're applying to. So for some of the departments, they want you to contact professors immediately. For this one, they want you to first submit an expression of interest form 
And then after submitting this form, you're told whether you're compatible for the department or not. But even with this form, I think it's a good idea to also contact the supervisor beforehand or check the faculty um, page and see what the professors are doing there. So I've um, opened like a, what they call it, one of the expression of interest forms, the one for education. This is what it looks like. And education has, I think, particular deadlines. Even though they said initially it is all year round, you can see here there's a deadline in March and there's another deadline in October. So the March deadline is passed already. So let's try the deadline in October. And the forms will start, um, they'll start taking the forms in September. So the form is just mostly about C. You can see the list here. You have to submit a research proposal. There's a video on my channel already on how to submit a research proposal. Then other documents, um, associate documents like references, like your undergrad certificates, proof of English proficiency and the rest of them. They also ask somewhere whether you um, have like a faculty member. So here you can check the faculty profile as well, whether you've identified or contacted one of the faculty members. That's why it's a good thing to always contact faculty members in the first place. Because here you see on the form, they're ask, actually asking for it. And be careful, this is not the application form. This is the expression of interest form. So if you feel this form well and they think it's good enough, then you can open an application and start applying for the scholarship. But this is just like the first knock on the door to see whether you're compatible for the course or not. So check for your own faculties and see what, are, what they are doing there. Check um, the, the different application procedures. And um, yeah, scroll down. And the application procedure is also clearly spelled out here. So check pathway, find a supervisor, arrange reference reports, prepare pro proposal, evidence of English proficiency, then the other documents and then apply. So this is like a general framework of how to go about it. But still remember to go to the department you're interested in. Go there and see and see what they actually need. So if I were you, if you're from the education department, you go to that department and see their particular requirements. For business, also go there and see. So for Australia, I've said this before, that even if you're applying for a master's, for most of these scholarships, it is master's by research. So you're coming to do a research program rather than a thought program. It means you're coming with a proposal, you're coming with a research topic and things like that. So if you do not know how to do that, run to my channel, go to the, to the home page and scroll down a little, you will see a list of how to write a research proposal and things like that. That will get you covered through and through. But still read this information provided here and you'll be fine eventually if you do your own background research. And that's it, guys. Just a quick one at Daikin University. I decided to bring this to your interest because of the fact that you do not need an agent to apply to this university. So just sit down, digest the information, and you'll be fine at the end of the day. You do not need any um, third-party interference. And I hope this was useful. As usual, guys, we cannot wait to celebrate you will bring you up-to-date scholarships around the world. Several people on our channel are already winning several scholarships, so do not be an exception. And I will see you at the top sooner than later. Bye-bye for now. Cheers.